Hi, this is Matt McIntosh and in this video I'm going to look at technique 2 uh, using the topology brush in ZBrush uh, to retop your characters. So um, as you can see it's very similar to the process that I've shown before. Where you draw in patches that you can delete lines off of. Uh, if you press the Alt key and click on it you should get the geometry that you're after. Um, if you're getting this sort of a thing going on, it could be that you've got too many subtools as part of the objects you try to retop. So in Blue Peter style, um, here's one that I've done earlier. Um, I'm not going to bore you with the whole process of that. Um, to convert it, press the Alt key. And as you can see, due to the size of my reticle, I'm getting some thickness on this. So what I need to do is shrink down my reticle to draw size one. Press the Alt key and click on an unretopped part of the mesh, and that converts it into a, a piece of geometry for me. So to separate it out, I need to go to Visibility, Hide Point, and now I need to go back to my subtool and split Hidden, which is just there, and that kicks it into a, a new subtool for me. As we can see from this, it's kind of giving it inside out. So if you go down to uh, display properties and click on flip that will put it the right way around okay so now that I've got this geometry I can look to export it out and put some mapping coordinates on it so I'm just going to export it as torso extract and I'm just going to load it into unwrap UVW um, it would be the same process if you're using 3ds max um, and the pelt mapping within that. So all I'm going to do with this is cut my seam down the front, split it, and then I'm going to just flatten the object out, um, pressing F on my keyboard, or if it's plain silly buggers like this, just press Shift F, and as we can see, that's flattened it out quite effectively. And I just want to save that back out over the top of the file that I had before. So if I import it back into ZBrush as Torso Extract, it comes in to replace the file that we had before, or the piece of mesh that we've got before. Um, as it stands, if I was to divide this mesh with the Smooth button turned on, we can see that it affects the actual size of the geometry. So if I show all of my subtools at once, we'll see that there's a bit of a gap between the edges of this mesh and the surfaces of the other meshes. So we want to avoid that. And the way that we can go about doing that is if I press Control Z a few times to get back to where I was. Okay. Um, what I can do with this is turn off that smoothing function. So if I just click this button and click on divide, you can see dividing it and it's keeping the shape. Unfortunately though, we're up to half a million polys. I'm going to go one more. Um, unfortunately, it's got all these kind of lines going through the mesh. So to get around this, what I'm going to do is go to the project tool, increase its distance up to one. Uh, but before I click on that, I'm just going to store a morph target if anything goes wrong. Okay, so now that I've got that, I go back to my subtools, click on project all, and what this will do is kind of suck it to the original mesh that we've got uh, visible in the scene. And that will get rid of all those kind of faceted edges that we had before. Um, so as you can see, that's kind of sorted out all those issues. Um, now, as we can see, there was a little bit of a kind of uh, mesh sticking out on the back of the armor, which is just, just here. Now, if you want to spend some time, you can use the morph tool. Um, that one. Okay, and you can blend it back. I'm not going to bother doing it, but it's just like using your um, standard polish tools and things like that, except it goes back to the morph target that we'd stored before. 
Okay, so what what possible use is this? Well, basically, because we've got mapping coordinates on it and we've retopped it in the form that we're after, we can bring in a texture with a pattern on it, a repeating pattern. So I'm just going to bring in this hexagon pattern that I've got. If I hover over it, you can see it there. If I turn the intensity into the negative and apply my displacement map, you can see that it's given me a nice even pattern that goes all over the mesh and is nice and consistent. Which, if you were trying to go around that with an alpha and apply it, you wouldn't be able to get as consistent a pattern. So it's really useful for kind of, you know, adding extra detail in later on. If you wanted to put cloth surfaces or, you know, kind of fiber, cotton appearance, that would be a really good method. Thanks for listening.